Welcome beautiful people, welcome to yet another video. I hope you guys are feeling good. I am glad to be back with another video and, and in today's video, <laughs> we are back with Match Week 9. Now Match Week 9 just happened with the two major games over the weekend okay three including Chelsea but the derbies were what made the most noise over the weekend on social media we had the North London Derby where we had Arsenal just tearing Tottenham up but the most the most brutal the most it was it was it, it was dehumanizing I mean uh, how are you guys how, how are you guys I mean if you've been watching this I mean it was not it was not the best weekend for Manchester United but in terms of Manchester Derby, of course, Manchester City is just on another level. And I will be getting into that a little bit later. In terms of some Chelsea news, I have a bit of transfer news. There is some news in terms of the women's club. Make sure you stay tuned till the end to get to hear what I have to say about the women's club. I am a bit excited about the news. This is, of course, in terms of the Champions League. And as Chelsea, our next fixture is, of course, the Champions League fixture. Now, we as Chelsea, we are having not one of our best seasons in terms of... Oh, so many things and so many things we need to work on but this will be a new video if you like the content and you're new to the channel please consider subscribing turn on the post notification bell you'll be notified every time I upload a video let's unpack what happened in match week 9 now with starting us off on <laughs> setting us off on Saturday we had Arsenal versus Tottenham now this is a very interesting game I was able to catch a few minutes of it not the whole game but within with, with the way the game went I mean I thought Tottenham would put on a better fight, to be honest. And I mean, the way Son played in the last game, you know, coming as a super substitution and making all those incredible goals, I thought kind of the same thing might happen. But you know, you can only do so much. Now, in terms of the North London Derby, Arsenal were able to take the win. Now, in terms of goal scorers, we had um, Patty, we had Gabriel Jesus, and then we had Grand Shaka. And in terms of Tottenham, Tottenham were only able to get a penalty through Hurricane. In terms of the North London Derby, Arsenal just you know made as much noise as possible and you know what I feel like <laughs> we should we should emulate <laughs> we should emulate no 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 we cannot emulate we cannot emulate Arsenal but you know the way the Arsenal did their thing they calmed down they they realized you know what we're not as big as a club as we were before so we have to calm down and look at where they are they're just leading the league they, they just calm they just they just go with the vibes they enjoy the games whatever happens happens and I feel like <laughs> They've been working on their team. We know that they have so many young players and with the additional signing of Gabriel Jesus, a very good scorer in terms of, a very good finisher in terms of scoring goals. He has of course added an asset in terms of Arsenal. This is really doing well for them. So in terms of the North London Derby, was it the best game for Tottenham? No, but in terms of Arsenal, they took it and they're currently leading in the Premier League table. So enjoy while it lasts. I don't think it will last that long, but let's see how that goes. Then in terms of the next game, we had Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. Now, as I said, if you've not checked out my review, please check it out. I'll be linking it in the description box down below. We had uh, our asses, we, 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 we escaped, <laughs> we escaped literally with just a bit. It was just a lucky game for us. So details of how the game went will be in, the, in, my, in my review. So if you have not checked it out, please make sure you do. Then in terms of the next game, we had Fulham versus Newcastle. Now Newcastle absolutely demolished Fulham with four goals with a 4-1 win against Fulham. Now Fulham was struggling throughout this game. Of course, the, the, the what destroyed Fulham, what completely finished Fulham was the fact that they got a red card in the eighth minute. Now, Daniel Chaloba was booked on the eighth minute and this was just their downfall and Newcastle just kept scoring goal after goal after goal. In terms of Newcastle, as I mentioned, um, they were able to completely destroy Fulham and that was thanks to the red card. I mean, with 10 men, with 10 men up against 11 men, it's definitely going to be a not fair game to be honest and uh, this was the this was their winning streak i would like to think so so in terms of newcastle they were able to get the goal they were able to get four goals against the one full hum and the one full hum goal was to win the eight eight minute which was just like a pity <laughs> it's more or less like a pity goal you know in terms of full hum this was not their best games but that is what happens when you go 10 men down but Leeds would like to talk a different story. In terms of Leeds versus Aston Villa, they maintained the goals from the beginning to the end and it was nil-nil throughout and I mean, why wouldn't you take advantage of a 10-man squad? Why? Why? But it is what it is. That was what happened over the weekend. In terms of some more games, we also had Liverpool versus Brighton. Now, to, to be honest, I felt like this was going to be a Brighton game. 
it was supposed to be a Brighton win, to be honest. I mean, Liverpool have not been having the best season. And in terms of this game, by halftime, Brighton already 2-0 up. And it was looking as though, you know, Brighton would take this home. Now, apart from the own goal from Brighton by Adam, and of course, the two goals by Firmino, it was, it was looking like a show win for Brighton. Unfortunately, it ended up in a 3-3 draw, and I wish Brighton took the lead. But, you know, Brighton are ahead of us in the Premier League table, so I will take this draw any day, any time. <laughs> then in terms of the next game, we had Southampton versus Everton, where Everton were able to, not demolish, but they were able to win Southampton by a 2-1 win. Then in terms of the next game, we had West Ham versus Wolves. Now, this is where the drama happened. Well, not so much drama. In terms of what happens after the game, this is where I, think, I feel like there was the most drama in terms of um, in terms of Wolves versus West Ham. West Ham were able to win Wolves with a 2 0 win, and this costs a manager his job. Now, Wolves United have sacked their manager Bruno Large after their defeat against West Ham. I mean, this had them go to the relegation zone. So, I mean, it's safe to say they've had enough, and they're looking on to they're looking on to find a new coach. So, in terms of a new coach. Why Thomas Tuchel take it? I don't know, I don't think so, but <laughs> that was in terms of West Ham versus Bulls. Now, of course, in terms of Manchester Derby, everyone is talking about this and this, it just got me thinking, you know, I made a video last summer where I did a comparison between Lukaku and Erling Haaland and I just want to say, um, I <laughs> I feel some way about it. I mean, of course, in the video, I'll be linking it in the description box down below. I mentioned one of the reasons why I felt like Lukaku would be a better suit, would be a better fit in terms of coming to Chelsea. But I, I, I kind of regret it, guys, you know? I, I kind of feel bad that I actually even made the video. But I still made it, and if you want to check it out, it's a bit, it's a bit of a year now that I made it. So it's not the same person now in terms of Haaland I did not think this was the, this was going to be the case when he comes to the champions when he comes to the Premier League now he's making the Premier League look so easy because he has been able to score 14 goals with 30 games left the highest goal scorer of the last season who won the golden boots was Son and Salah with three goals and he's just nine goals away this speaks volumes and of course we as Chelsea should have pushed for the release clause for Erling Haaland but we cannot cry over spilled milk over spilled water we cannot cry over uh, you know it's gone it's gone there's nothing we can do about it I mean but the guys in this he's very flexible um we'll see what happens when we meet them but we'll see what happens when Chelsea meet Manchester United Manchester City but in terms of Manchester United thank God <laughs> In terms of Eric, Eric Ten Hag, he has worked under Pep in, in the past, so it was just basically going to be a carbon copy. If anything, he will try to emulate him, that's how it looked. But in terms of Manchester United, they were having a bit of a winning streak and were feeling a bit confident, but Manchester, you know, Manchester City just... They have, they, they have a tendency to do that, they have a tendency to humble people and I don't know what will happen, we as Chelsea when we face them but that was what happened over the weekend, Matrix 9, it was full of drama, full of chaos, we had a manager sacked we had a team demolish another one with 6 goals, 3 hat-tricks with 2 individuals, really? but it is what it is, it was a very interesting weekend for me, I really enjoyed all the games and I sure hope you did too. Now, in terms of Chelsea, what is going on in Chelsea? Now, I have to talk about the news. Of course, breaking news has been released today that um, Christopher Nkunku has already signed a pre-contract. There have been communication with the player. Of course, there was the news that was released that he has already signed um, the... He has already done the medicals. He had a secret medicals. In terms of some more transfer news now, it has been reported that Chelsea have been interested in signing the player. Josko Bradiel. Now, he... He has been linked to Chelsea. He is also being he is also being said to uh, be at activating his release clause. And in terms of Nkunku, Chelsea have already said that they are willing to pay to pay an excess of the release clause of 60 million. And I mean, let's see what happens. And I hope I hope Nkunku can do what Haaland is doing the absolute most. <laughs> You guys should definitely check out that old video. Tell me what you guys think about that. And tell me your thoughts about my whole <laughs> dissection of how Haaland would have performed if he came to Chelsea. But 
it is what it is in terms of our next few games our next few fixtures will be having AC Milan on Wednesday now we know in the Champions League we are struggling we are currently lost in our group and <laughs> We will we'll need a miracle, we'll need an absolute miracle because our last two games we had a draw against RB Salzburg and then we had a loss against Zagreb that cost Thomas Tuchel's job. Oh, I don't think that was the reason but it could have been one of the reasons that propelled uh, the, the board to put, the, 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 that propelled uh, Todd Boyley or the board to, to fire him or whoever fired him. That would have been a motivating factor but I would like to think that we need we cannot fall out of this you know as the women's champions league the ucl draw has already been dropped and uh, that is what i'll be get, getting into in a bit but we ha we are struggling yeah we are last with two points and of course ac milan is leading the group with four points um um, in terms of Salzburg, Salzburg I think is a second, Salzburg a second and then I think uh, Zagreb a third, then we are fourth. We'll be facing AC Milan on Wednesday on the 8th of October at Stamford Bridge and I'm really excited about this one. I hope we can actually put on a show because our last game was not convincing. It was pretty, it was, it, it was, uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to put in effort. So in terms of our next games, we have Wolves next, of course Wolves have just sacked their manager. In terms of their motivation, in terms of their confidence, it might be low, but we cannot underestimate them. We cannot underestimate AC Milan, and after the Wolves game, we face AC Milan again. So it's gonna be a back-to-back -back fight, and we have to be on toes. We, there's no time to rest, there's no time for breaks whatsoever. We had the break over September, September was shaky month, but we move. <laughs> in terms of women's club, the group stages have been dropped. Now, of course, the women's club last season were incredible in terms of the Champions League. Of course, we won the we won the we won the home title, we won the home league. But in terms of the Champions League, yo, the Barcelona fans were on fire and they just it was a lot, it was a lot, it was a lot to unpack. But I hope this season is gonna be better. I mean finishing um first run first runners up is not too bad in terms of women's club. So Let's see how this goes. In terms of the group stages now, who has Chelsea been drawn with? In terms of the group stages, we're in group A. Chelsea is in the same group with um, the PSG, Real Madrid, and Vlasnia. Vlasnia. What an interesting name, Vlasnia. Those are the teams that are in the group, group stage A in terms of Chelsea Women's Football Club. I cannot wait to see how things go. So that was what happened over the weekend. It was a very interesting derby. It was very interesting in terms of Arsenal, in terms of Manchester United, Manchester City, the Manchester Derby. Very interesting. I wish all our games can be as interesting as this. I mean, can I watch a game without dozing off? I mean, you know, I, one of the things I really like about the Manchester game was the fact that as much as there was a lot of high pressing in terms of Man City, it was not a boring game and towards the end, nobody even wanted to leave the game. That's how much the players wanted to play. The Manchester City players wanted to be substituted but they were just like, oh, I wanna... You could see it in their faces, they wanted to play more and this is what I wish the players should have but you know, in terms of Man City, it has taken years and years of building the club. Manchester City have invested in their coach. They don't sack them at, you know, the slightest mistake. And they give them an opportunity to work with them. Hopefully, this is what happens with Graham Potter. I don't think this will. This is what will happen because the Americans are looking like they don't have a lot of patience. They're really switching up the whole thing from the rehabilitation center to the to the cooks to the. <laughs> literally, everybody should. Everybody is scared for the job right now in Chelsea. So. Even though I feel, is it just me or is the admin? I feel the admin was changed too. Is it just me? Because I don't know, I don't know. Tell me in the comment section down below. But that was what happened over the weekend. If you enjoyed the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. Share it with your family and friends. Please don't forget to subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. You'll be notified every time I upload a video of the Chelsea. And this is your sign to join Chelsea. If you haven't, you should do it right now.